Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining uh, this afternoon. Um, we're here to chat about the Center for Housing and Health, uh, the policy priorities. Um, as Rachel said, my name is Dominique Chu. I use she, her pronouns. I am the Housing Policy and Advocacy Manager at AFC, but obviously I'm here to chat about CHH, so I kind of wear two hats sometimes. Um, really, really grateful to have you all here today to learn about the first ever policy priorities for the Center for Housing and Health. Um, special thank you and shout out and welcome to folks who um, participated in any of the listening sessions or the focus groups, took surveys. Um, we wouldn't have this document if it weren't for your input. So we are so, so grateful. Um, and thank you so much for joining today. The layout got a little bit wonky when we embedded into, into Teams, so forgive me for the layout. But this is a bit about the, the policy priorities development process. Um, if you've ever attended um, a webinar to learn about the AFC side and their policy priorities, this looks very familiar to you. It is literally the exact same process. Um, we start with an ask and listen phase. And this is really when we take time to um, set up focus groups and listening sessions and we ran a survey as well that lasted about eight weeks to get input from folks uh, with lived experience of homelessness and housing instability, folks who were part of the workforce, um, board members and staff as well, um, to kind of hear um, specifically about what challenges that people who are experiencing homelessness or housing instability are facing as they work to achieve their best health as they work to um, secure housing that is safe and stable. Uh, this is where we ask folks if you could dream big and money wasn't an option and we could do anything, like what do you wanna see? What would you like to see you know, on this legislative agenda? Um, so this is really a time for us to just sit back and, and listen while we ask questions and get input from, from folks with lived experience. Then we move to summarize and analyze. We take all of the data and information that we got during the listening sessions, the focus groups, and the information and responses from the survey and kind of see what themes arise. What keeps coming up again and again? What bills do people talk about? What topics are people discussing repeatedly? Um, what kind of other pieces of legislation um, or ideas are people having um, that kind of uh, we're seeing you know, over and over again in this process? And then we're in this decide and report back phase now, right? We have the priorities decided. Um, they're in a, a linked document in this in this PowerPoint that you all can explore afterwards. Um, that was beautified and, and, and laid out and designed by our fantastic comms team. Uh, so we have our policy priorities decided. Now we're kind of reporting back. Um, it's really important, right, that we ensure that people who participated in this process and provided information to us that they learn where their, their input um, is going. And then we move to implement and monitor, right? This is how we um, kind of let the, the legislative process play out. Uh, you'll see the, the Center for Housing and Health Policy Priorities reflect state level work as well as city level. That's one difference between the AFC policy priorities and the CHH ones, is that for CHH we're doing uh, multiple levels of government here, whereas the AFC side really focuses on um, state level work. So that's a bit about the the, the process for developing these policy priorities. Just a little bit of a breakdown of kind of the who was uh, providing this information. We did focus groups, we did a survey. We had six focus groups with 54 unique participants. Um, we had the Center for Housing and Health Community Advisory Board, or CAB. We had the Lived Experience Advisory Council, the Youth Lived Experience Advisory Council, the Getting to Zero Illinois Housing Committee, which is a group that is co-led by myself and Jen Jimenez. Um, we heard from the CHH and AFC housing staff, as well as the CHH board. Uh, our survey, which was uh, open for about eight weeks, had 72 respondents, um, was statewide, was also, uh, we received responses from folks with lived experience and folks in the workforce as well. So that's a bit about our focus groups and our survey. This is a slide that I shared kind of at the top of all of our listening sessions, right? I wanted to make sure that um, the policy priorities and the work that we're doing around this legislative agenda are really reflective of the mission and vision of the Center for Housing and Health. So the mission of the Center for Housing and Health is that CHH honors every person's right to a home and health care by bridging the housing and healthcare systems to improve the lives of Chicagoans experiencing homelessness. 
The vision is that every person has a place to call home that helps them reach their full potential, right? Inherently, housing is healthcare and housing is a human right. Uh, then we, of course, have housing is a racial justice issue. Um, this is not shocking to many of you probably, but 80% of Chicago's uh, homeless population is Black. So this is an issue that is really, really rooted in um, racial justice. And we know that as we work to end homelessness, we're working towards um, doing our best to achieve racial equity, right? And also, we're working inherently at ending the HIV epidemic as well, which um, impacts the exact same populations, right? So this is kind of our areas um, that we're working to align our legislative agenda. So let's move now into the priorities themselves. We have a much smaller agenda than AFC does. It's it's me and it's going to be all of you when it's when it comes time to do our advocacy here. But um, we have four 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 areas of work. Um, we're starting with the Senate Bill 2158. Um, this is stop the revolving door from reentry to homelessness to prison. This is a bill with the Chicago 400. I'll deep dive into all of these in just a moment. We have the behavioral health transformation also called the 1115 Medicaid waiver. We also have state and city budget work um, with uh, specifically the city budget. We're talking about funding for the flexible housing pool. Um, once you get these slides afterwards, this link here goes directly to um, the policy parties document, which is housed on the Center for Housing and Health website. All right, so let's start our deep dive here. So the first um, policy party we have here state level Senate Bill 2158, um, which is our bill with the Chicago 400. Well, the Chicago 400 bill that we are supporting them on. Um, subtitle here, Stop the Revolving Door from Reentry to Homelessness to Prison. Um, as a reminder, the Chicago 400 is a group of Chicagoans who are experiencing homelessness due to really harmful housing banishment laws. Um, these are folks who um, believe heavily in accountability um, and believe that, you know, in their words, that they have paid their debts to society, they have been held accountable and now are being held back specifically in the way of housing and employment opportunities due to really harmful housing banishment laws. Um, another piece of this is that when someone is listed on one of the state's uh, conviction registries, they are forced to register every week in person at a police station rather than um, annually or quarterly in the way that house people do. So there are a lot of layers to how um, these laws are really harming people and their ability to move forward. Um, the Chicago 400 is a group that um, AFC and CHH have come to know well. Um, we worked on a storytelling training series and showcase with them about a year ago. Um, I can also share with Rachel the link to that. It's on YouTube if you are interested in hearing um, they're really, really moving stories from the guys there. But back to the bill. Senate Bill 2158 would do a few things. Um, reduce housing banishment zones from 500 feet to 250 feet. It would allow folks experiencing homelessness to register at police stations annually or quarterly, like I said, in the way that housed people do. Um, and then it would reduce failure to register penalties from a felony to a misdemeanor. Um, so this is uh, a, a bill that's been in the works for a while. Um, and to be transparent, we're actually reintroducing it next legislative session. So come January, February, this might actually have a different bill number. Um, but when that happens, we'll be sure to keep folks up to date so you know kind of what to look for in your own advocacy efforts. Then we're moving on to the also state level the 1115 Medicaid waiver or the behavioral health transformation. So a bit of background here. Um, the Illinois Department of Healthcare and Family Services, HFS, they applied to um, extend by five years an already existing 1115 Medicaid waiver, and that application has been approved. Um, I think we're shifting the language, forgive me, to behavioral health transformation. But essentially, HFS applied to be able to provide additional services that aren't yet covered under Medicaid. Um, so these a few examples include um, employment assistance, um, services um, for people who are returning from prison and jail. And then of course, because it's on our, our policy priorities uh, agenda, uh, housing supports as well. Um, 
Our goal with CHH is to advocate for full and equitable implementation of the behavioral health transformation to make sure that Illinoisans who are enrolled in Medicaid and who are living with chronic conditions and experiencing homelessness or housing instability or have experience with the criminal legal system um, um, will benefit from these additional services and have a better opportunity to achieve their best health. Uh, specifically, one uh, focus of our work will be to advocate for, for Medicaid to adopt a streamlined billing and reimbursement system for supportive housing services. Um, I will also say that uh, this is work too that we have uh, tried to engage the Getting to Zero Illinois Housing Committee um, in. Uh, this is not like a meeting by meeting or day by day like um, piece of work for them necessarily, but as folks who uh, do this work and work directly with people experiencing homelessness and housing instability, um, we envision that there will be opportunities for them to provide um, feedback on how this uh, implementation is going. And in fact, we've already had some really, really helpful feedback from them. Uh, we've been able to build connections with a couple of folks who were sitting really at the table, who were kind of making decisions and discussing about how this um, behavioral health transformation will play out across the state. Um, so if you actually are someone who um, has questions about this, or is more uh, interested in learning about this, um, my contact information is at the end. If you work at AFC or CHH, you know how to reach me, I guess. Um, and I'm happy to either answer some questions for you about this or get you in touch with someone who um, can answer them well, because I will confess that I am not an expert on Medicaid. <laughs> um, the next thing here at the state level is around the state budget. Um, so we're working on ending homelessness for people living with chronic conditions, including mental health conditions, substance use disorders, uh, or HIV. Um, so for fiscal year 26, we're going to advocate for housing and supportive services for people experiencing homelessness and housing instability who are also living with chronic health conditions. We're going to work to ensure the timely allocation and spending of these funds by state agencies. Now, my guess is that you see this and you're like, wow, this is really this is really vague. There's no numbers here. And that's true. Um, a couple of things. One, there are other organizations who also do a lot of housing advocacy. Think Chicago Coalition to End Homelessness, which is formerly Chicago Coalition for the Homeless, um, the Supportive Housing Providers Association, or SHPA, um, Housing Action Illinois. Um, we're going to start having conversations with them about what their asks are going to be, and we're going to align our state budget ask with theirs. Um, that's one piece of this. The second is that the state does have a plan to end homelessness. It's called the Home Illinois Plan. Um, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this. And within the last legislative session, I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm correct about this, um, there was $290 million allocated to the Home Illinois Plan. So our job, too, will be to make sure that that funding is allocated and spent um, in a timely manner to ensure that we can achieve our goal of ending homelessness um, in the state of Illinois. And then we have here also the city of Chicago, our city budget ask. Um, we are advocating for funding in the city's budget for affordable housing and supportive services. Um, many of you were just absolutely instrumental and so helpful in our fight for Bring Chicago Home, which we unfortunately um, you know, lost um, during the primaries last March. Um, but we know that you know, there's a lot of people and groups and organizations who still want to be a part of the fight to end homelessness in our city. Um, so we are really working on ensuring that we kind of come together with those folks and, and create an ask to make sure that the city is uh, dedicating funds to ending homelessness. Um, one way that we're doing that is advocating for um, the flexible housing pool to be funded at $11.2 million for fiscal year 2025. Um, myself, Pete Tepfer, Nadine Israel, and um, Rosa Martinez Colon have been having meetings with um, many folks across the city, including members of the mayor's team, and especially a number of um, older people to kind of get this ask going. The city's budget, um, the fiscal year is, is January to December, so budget conversations have been happening since around mid-July. Um, we have been uh, making sure that we're getting our ass in with the correct older people, but also we're hoping that when it comes time to um, uh, have budget hearings that um, I think Pete, Rosa, and myself will work to testify um, and kind of get our aldermanic allies to support us in that effort as well. Um, that'll be later this fall. Um, 
I think we're also working on a uh, media strategy as well for this. Um, all that to say, this is going to be um, a really local and uh, important way for anyone to get involved in, in advocacy at the city level, but also organizationally, right? This is a huge and a very important program for the Center for Housing and Health. Um, so if ever, you know, there are opportunities to get involved here, we're going to make sure that you are aware of them. Um, like I said, this is like quite a small um, list of policy parties because it's <laughs> just me um, and, and a few other folks here at the, at the organization. Um, that's our, our policy priorities. Um, so I'm curious if folks have any questions that I can answer in the meantime. Um, yeah. I guess that's 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 what I've got for you. I think maybe I saw some chats also. Let me see. Maybe not. Okay. I'm seeing applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Timothy. <laughs> I like to keep it short and sweet, you know, guys. <laughs> Great job, Dominique. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Okay. Oh, I, I have a question for you. Dominic. Yeah, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to help with advocating for any of these excellent priorities, what are some things that they can do? Yeah. First, you can text AFC to Borough 649 and get text messages about kind of our advocacy work that we're doing. Um, and then also, you know, the the policy priorities for CHH, like I said, they're state and they're city, right? So um, there's going to be times actually throughout the year to get engaged in this work. Um, one thing that we're actually really hoping to to potentially do this year is do a housing specific advocacy day. Um, this is going to be a work that the Getting to Zero Illinois Housing Committee will be participating in and helping to plan. So if you are someone who's interested in, in housing advocacy and would like to go down to Springfield, um, I'll definitely be sure to, to keep you in the loop there. You can just reach out to me and I'll be sure to, to kind of keep you um, keep you up to date about that process as well. And then we're also going to have um, I don't know if you uh, all remember the the act. Why is it escaping me? Timothy might have told me about the action center, the action center, the mobile action center. Um, that's going to be a really, really fantastic way, an easy way for you to engage with these pieces of legislation or this, these policy priorities as well. Any other questions? That's okay. If not, just wanted to say, I know there's a, a number of people in here and I said at the beginning, but I know folks have hopped on, but just a tremendous thank you to anyone who's on the call right now and participated in focus groups and listening sessions and took the, the survey because we really truly cannot do this work without input from people with lived experience and people who work, you know, frontline and direct service. So this is really a testament to, to your input and to the advocacy that you've already done. Um, so we're really, really excited to keep working with you um, as we work to end homelessness in, in Chicago and across the state. I'll put up my, my contact info here if you have any questions. Oh, thanks for all the comments, y'all. Yeah. You have one question. Oh, how okay. will updates be shared on I'm I'm assuming progress uh for yeah progress I'm priority. guessing. Yeah, great question, Dave. I think we'll um probably be sharing via, you know, blog posts, social media posts, um, specifically around budget. You can definitely keep your eyes peeled in the next, you know, we'll have those kinds of um, answers around how the budget goes at the city level by the end of the year. And then, of course, legislative session for the state will begin next January. So um, definitely keep your eyes peeled around around uh, AFC social media there as well. And CH wait, does CHH have social media? AFC social media. Thanks for that question, Dave. Thanks, Jen. Shouts out to Jen for the GTC Housing Committee work.
Oh, thank you, Timothy. I just saw that. Thank you, Timothy. Yes, these slides also, I think, Rachel, can be shared too, right? And there's a link to the, the policy parties document there as well. So you can definitely check that out as well. <laughs> Basically, the running consensus, Dominique, is that you did an incredible job. Wow, um, that's, that's why <laughs> there are no questions. Um, yes, for those of you who are internal staff at AFC, uh, stay tuned for an email from me with the slides and the recording attached. Um, if you are external and you um, want to be able to share this with folks, give me a minute on that. Um, I work internally, so some of my ability to share things externally is a little bit limited, but I can uh, partner with our comms team to get um, something that is externally shareable ready to go. And I already got an email from somebody who needed it. So um, if you would like that, please feel free to reach out to me, happy to assist. But otherwise, you know how to get in touch with Dominique and to stay tuned on all of the policy updates as they happen for housing and for AFC, um, broadly speaking. Uh, thank you again so much, Dominique. You rocked it. This was great. Um, looking forward to having you back next year, it sounds like, Absolutely. for another round of policy priorities for the coming year. Yeah. Um, and Tim, I know we have to schedule one probably as well. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> uh, and that's all, folks. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Thanks, y'all. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> Bye. Bye.